Hi everybody, I'm Adam from Evo and today I'm going to show you how to get FL Studio working with your Evo interface. This should work for the Evo 4, Evo 8 and Evo 16. Now first things first, before we look at FL Studio at all, we need to look at plugging in our Evo interface and getting the drivers installed and we'll also look at plugging in a microphone and getting some signal before we open the door. First thing I'm going to do is get my Evo interface, in this case the Evo 8, and I'm using a Mac, so I'm going to use the USB-C to C cable, although you can use a USB-C to A cable as well, and plug that straight in to my Mac. That also works with Windows, and we see there is allow accessory to connect, and we have to hit allow here. Now that's not the end of the story, that's just the beginning. If you do need to use all the functionality on the Evo 8, including all the phantom power, we do recommend using the USB-C port because USB-A may not be able to provide all the power. There are exceptions, but USB-C is our recommendation. Next thing we have to do is install the Evo drivers. So to find those, we're going to go to our browser and head to the evo.audio website. Link is down below in the description. Here you can find the products tab and go to the page for whatever Evo interface you have, in my case, the Evo 8. And as we go down the page, we will see there is the downloads link at the top. Click on the downloads link. And now we're on the downloads page, head down to drivers and either click on Mac or Windows driver, whatever is appropriate for your platform. In my case, that would be Mac driver. Now the Evo driver is downloaded, we have to open it and drop the Evo onto applications. On Windows, we would double click on the Evo installer and go through the steps as necessary. On Windows, it is important to have the device disconnected whilst installing the driver and then connect the device later so that Windows can see the Evo interface properly. Now the driver is installed, we double click on the Evo in applications and that will come up in our taskbar at the top. It will say it's downloaded from the internet. Are you sure you want to open it? Yes, we do. It would like to access the microphone, that's okay. In my case, there's a firmware update required, so I will hit okay and work through those steps. If that's something you come across and you need help, we will have a video on the support page. Once the Evo mixer is beginning to open, the Arc Creative Hub window will come up, which will give you access to the Arc system where you can find lots of free plugins, software, uh, discounts and offers on audio plugins and other things on here. You can join that. I'm already a member, so I'll click already a member and close this down. Now the Evo mixer is ready, but to open it up, we need to go to our top right bar on Mac or bottom right on Windows and find the E. Click on the E for Evo, and in my case, show mixer. With the Evo 4 interface, there's no need to do this as it's quite a different setup where it's all on interface, but with Evo 8 and 16, we need the mixer to give us the most functionality. Next, we're going to plug in a microphone. I have a studio condenser microphone here, which will need 48 volt phantom power, and I'm going to plug it into microphone input number one. Once that's plugged in, I need to hit number one for channel one, and then hit the 48 volt button at the top. That will now power the microphone, so that's ready to go. Then I need to set the gain on my microphone because it probably won't be loud enough to get the right signal from this microphone. Either I can turn up the big knob in the middle to increase the gain, in which case that's manual, or I can use the smart gain feature by pressing the smart gain button, just hitting the number one for just the one microphone, hit smart gain again and make some noise. Once you've made the appropriate amount of noise, smart gain should be set for that microphone. The same can be done for each other input. Now we have a microphone that's plugged in and working that we can see in our Evo mixer. Let's move on to our door. Okay, now we have FL Studio installed, we have our Evo mixer installed and our interface plugged in, microphone working, signal on screen. Let's get FL Studio opened and running. So by default, FL Studio opens up with a blank project and tends to use default audio drivers. So we need to change it to use 
our Evo interface, in this case, our Evo 8. So we're going to go to Options and Audio Settings. And we need to be in the Audio tab at the top. So first things first, let's change our audio device at the top here to be our Evo 8. And that has switched over immediately to using our Evo 8. Below that is sample rate in Hertz. 44,100 is generally accepted to be the CD standard, whereas 48,000 is the film standard, DVD standard, YouTube, anything that involves video at all. I personally tend to work in 48,000. There are sample rate choices above that, but I tend to find they're quite esoteric. Below that, we are looking at buffer length. Now, buffer length is to do with giving ourselves some time to breathe in terms of letting the audio come from our Evo interface through to FL Studio. FL Studio doing all the things it has to do with our song, with our project, then taking the audio back to the Evo 8 and out of the monitors on headphones. I tend to find that a shorter buffer length means that there's less delay or latency, but that could potentially incur a penalty where if the song is too complicated or if you have quite an old computer that can't quite keep up, you tend to find that you get pops, clicks, dropouts, because momentarily there will be little bits of silence where FL Studio can't send audio back to the Evo 8 in time. If that's happening, you'll see there's a number here, zero underruns. If that happens, that underrun number will go up. If it's more than zero, you may be having issues and you may need to increase this buffer length. 512 seems to be a good default. Shorter than that is good for audio performance. If you're using, let's say, the microphone through the system and through a compressor, an EQ, reverb, all that kind of stuff, then back out. 512 is a good default, 256 feels a little nicer. And as you start to get shorter, you do start to run the potential risk of underruns. Let's close this window down now and we should be able to get audio coming through the Evo interface, through the speakers and the headphones. And we should also be able to see our audio come in. If we hit the record button at the top, FL Studio rather helpfully asks us, what are we actually trying to do? What are we trying to record? So what I like to choose in this case is audio into the Edison audio editor and recorder. So I can select an audio input first as prompted by Edison. So I'm going to choose on the, the right hand side here, a mono input, which is my Klein instrument one, because this microphone is plugged into instrument one. And you can now see if we click on Edison here that it's already going, it's already recording us. And so an audio clip is going in as needed and we can use Edison. That's now playing back my audio. So we can process that as needed, use that as loops and do what we wish with that. So I'm gonna hit stop here. Now, if you could hear that coming through FL Studio, that's live monitoring and that's useful, but that's going through FL Studio, so any processing you do, you will hear, but that does bring up that amount of latency. Alternatively, what you can do is you can open with the E at the top, the Evo mixer, and if we're not getting live monitoring through the FL Studio, we can turn up this fader here on input one, and we can have near zero latency monitoring which means that this is almost instant going through the microphone to the Evo 8 and then straight out to the headphones or to the speakers without going through FL Studio. The downside there is that you won't get any of the processing in FL Studio. So things like delays, distortions, EQs, compressors, you wouldn't hear those as you record. So you can choose either near zero latency or that little bit of latency, but with all the processing to hear how the finished result would be. In that case as well, we would go back to Edison and on the top right hand corner is a little speaker icon. We would click that speaker icon, so that's now got a strike through it. And that means we're not hearing that now through FL Studio. We're hearing that only through the Evo mixer. You may run into an issue that I call ghosting, where you hear a kind of a doubled or chorused vocal effect or any other instrument you might be recording. What's happening there is you will have 
the monitoring in FL Studio coming through at the same time as the near zero latency monitoring from the Evo mixer. So the solution is to choose one or the other. If we want to hear what's coming through FL Studio, we would want to make sure the speaker monitoring is on in Edison or any other part of FL Studio. And that's in the Evo mixer. The slider for the near zero latency is turned all the way down. Or the opposite, if you would rather have the near zero latency from the Evo mixer. So there you go, that's the start of FL Studio. There are plenty of FL Studio specific tutorials out there on the internet, but this should hopefully get you working with your Evo interface with FL Studio. Thanks for watching. Anything else you might need, check out the Evo YouTube channel. If there's anything else you need, we've always got our support team. Thanks for watching and we'll see you out there.